Antimatter is the stuff of science fiction that turns out to be science fact. Our universe is made of tiny particles of matter, and in theory, every type of particle has an equivalent antiparticle, an evil twin that is the same in almost every way. For us, antimatter is this sort of evil twin of matter. And the idea now is that matter and antimatter existed in equal quantities at the beginning of the universe because that's what happens when we try to make them in the lab. And for some reason, we've got this universe that's only made of matter, and we don't know why. Next week, John Robinson is inadvertently transferred into a strange, unreal antimatter world where he is confronted by an exact counterpart image of himself. Historical events that I know happened a certain way somehow, according to the encyclopedia, didn't happen or happened another way. The things I remember are not delusions. They're the legitimate recollections of things as I remember them. But somehow, some way, this world seems to have turned upside down for me. It's as if there were... there were another world parallel to mine. As if this world were almost a twin, except for some minor differences that happen somewhere along the line. It's some guy wearing a Leela costume. Get him! Hold it! You have this all wrong! I just fell into the box and then I fell out somehow. It contains a parallel universe. And when you create a parallel universe, it's almost always populated by evil twins. Antimatter is being pulled out of nowhere, out of this other dimension, which is nowhere but everywhere. And I hope people have a general understanding of matter which we can touch and feel and observe, and antimatter, which we cannot touch, feel, or observe. However, it's working in tandem with the matter because everything is balanced. Antimatter is the opposite of the matter that we can control. Antimatter cannot be controlled. There is a very clear prediction that our most successful theory of nature makes. And that is that there are an enormous number, mind-bogglingly large number, of parallel realities, as real as this one. In quantum mechanics, there's this concept that an, an, a, a thing can exist in two states, which are mutually exclusive, at the same time. So the equations of quantum mechanics tell us that at any time, any object, myself or the world at large, exists in a superposition of many configurations. Intriguingly, look around in this room. We are forming a configuration too. And the equations of quantum physics would suggest that we sit in different arrangements in different worlds. They're doing something completely different than what your computer does. And that thing is like flight. It gives these computers access to these new resources, maybe you could call them parallel universes, in order to do something that you couldn't otherwise do. So if you're sta you have the opportunity to stand next to one of these machines, it is an awe-inspiring thing, at least for me. It feels like an altar to an alien god. It, they really are impressive machines. And these things that we're summoning into the world now are not demons, they're not evil, but they're more like the Lovecraftian great old ones. There are entities that are not necessarily going to be aligned with what we want.
Imagine that there really are parallel universes out there, and now imagine you have two that are exactly identical in every respect, all the way out to the horizon as far as we can see, down to the last little atomic detail of every single thing, with only one difference. And that's the value of a little thing called a qubit on this chip, which is a contraction of quantum bit. And that qubit is very much like a bit or a transistor in a conventional computer. It has two distinct physical states, which we call zero and one for bit. In a conventional computer, these are mutually exclusive. That device is either one or the other and never anything else. In a quantum computer, that device can be in this strange situation where these two parallel universes have a nexus, a point in space where they overlap. So the way I think about it is that the shadows of these parallel worlds overlap with ours. And if we're smart enough, we can dive into them and grab their resources and pull them back into ours to make an effect in our world. Quantum computing? is the first technology that takes the idea serious that we live in a multiverse. It can be seen as farming out computations to parallel universes. Indeed, it cannot be in a single world. So here you see a good example how quantum computing can attain an advantage by performing computations in parallel worlds. Suppose what your faith has said was essentially correct. Suppose there is a universal mind controlling everything, a God willing the behavior of every subatomic particle. Now, every particle has an antiparticle. Its mirror image, its negative side, maybe this universal mind resides in the mirror image instead of in our universe as we want it to believe. Maybe he's anti-God, bringing darkness instead of light. Why weren't we told the truth? <laughs> Without the technology to confirm, it would have been another legend. It's your disbelief that powers him. Your stubborn faith in, in common sense that allows his deception. He lives in the smallest parts of it. And the atoms, smaller, invisible. Connection to the dark dimension makes them more powerful in the mirror dimension. What the? What are you doing? No, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Stop. One minute here equals three hours there. I think it's parallel universes.
Actually, I like to think of it as creating little pieces of magic. For example, one state we prepared can be thought of as spawning a tiny traversable wormhole. We can use it to learn about the physics of wormholes. We can throw a qubit in and see how it reappears on the other side. it's going to cause them to be harmed. What they can't, what they fail to adopt from the Bible, what they fail to believe, is going to harm them. It's going to harm them. They may not be lost in their spirits, but they're certainly going to have lumps all over the place. It's going to harm them. Here's what, I mean, it really, it really gets to me, is that these scientists, over the course of many years, have quantified or they have calculated these things. They have extracted the truth, the facts, yet the Christians don't believe it. Yet the Christian community, for some reason, has a mental block on certain things of God as though they have all the time in the world. And the reason why I say people are going to be harmed when they don't believe these things is because if they do not believe in the spiritual realm, of our Lord, well, then they're giving the Spirit's authority to work in their lives. CERN has yielded so many results and gave a true definition of paranormal activity. It's just, it's beyond me that a lot of people cannot get this through the truth of the word. They, they can't. 